Hello lovely people and welcome back to another video. It's me, Itty Quaison, and we're still on our mental health series and today I have here with Lulu. Hi guys. So, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself before we start our video. Oh, okay. Hi everyone. Um, Grace Olichi Anugwa, like my three names. <laughs> <laughs> but my friends and everyone knows me as Lulu. That's my social public, you know, what they call it. That's my name, Sha Lulu. <laughs> and um, currently, as we're filming, I'm a medical student. And also, I'm almost done. I don't know when this video will be out, so maybe I'll be a doctor by then, to the glory of God. And yeah, I'm also a YouTuber. You could check out my channel at Chat with Lulu. Really amazing content there, you know. Don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> I'm Nigerian. I'm from the East. I'm evil because we know they carry last. I'm pretty like that. That's us, Sha. But yeah, I think that's all. I'm a Christian. Yeah. We're going to pick 10 questions out of what she sent in, and Lulu is going to answer it for us. Very smart, Lulu. Ha. So without further ado, English. Without further ado, <laughs> let's get into the video. Okay, sure. Please, before we before we get into this video, though, I'd like to say that one, I'm currently a student. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a therapist. I'm not a professional yet. So everything I'm saying now is based on my knowledge now. So I could make mistakes, and as I grow. As the days come by, I develop, I get better, and my answers can change later. Later, so this is Lulu May 2021. <laughs> if you ask me 2022 the same thing, and my answers change, just be aware that things have happened to me. Thank you. How do you define mental health and mental illness? Okay, so there is a standard definition for it, and I'll just read it out to you. Mental health is a state of well-being where an individual can achieve full potential, cope with normal stressors and issues of life, and contribute productively and meaningfully to their community. I'm going to take it again. <laughs> Mental health is a state of well-being where an individual can achieve full potential, cope with normal stressors and issues of life, and contribute productively and meaningfully to their community. Mental illness, on the other hand, is a relative change in a person's social and mental well-being, not just the absence of a disease. So with this, we can see what they are. Basically, it's kind of self-explanatory. Yeah. Or should I go for that? No. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, so our next question is, is mental illness a chronic disorder? Mm, chronic versus acute, you mean? Yes. Okay. I will say from my, from what I've seen thus far, m some of the illnesses are chronic. Yes, some are chronic, while some could be treated like over time. Examples of chronic. Examples of chronic would be things like schizophrenia, what we all know as the mad mad, like the street mad, that mad. So yes, yeah, schizophrenia, um, some schizoaffective, some depression. Some major depressive disorders could be chronic. That's to say, um, because if if you look at how they treat major depressive disorder, the first like treatment I think is for like six months. So if after six months you don't relapse, I'll call that acute, that kind of thing. So, chronic. so but whereas there are some that you have to treat for life, like if if they relapse again and stuff. So, so I'll say, I'll say some are chronic while some are acute. Yeah. Somebody in my family has mental illness. What are the chances that I will go through that as well? Okay. There is a strong genetic predisposition for most... English. English. Okay, okay, like... <laughs> okay, for most mental disorders, there is a strong family component. Like, that's genetic predisposition. So some of them are in the genes. That's why sometimes father is... Is sick and you see it in the child, you see it in the brother, the sister, all these things. And it's if there is a family history, there is a chance that you can get it. So I'm not going to say there's no chance. There is actually a chance that you could also get it. Yeah. So what will I tell you? I'll just tell you to. Um. What will I tell this person? Okay. 
I'm going to tell you to try your best to protect your mental health as much as possible. Um, see a psychiatrist when you see that there is a stress. Or once you notice any change with your mind, with your mentation, your mental stuff once you just notice or somebody says it to you try to get help as early as possible because for most of them the earlier you find it for some of them the earlier you discover the earlier the diagnosis is made and treatment begins you could be all right at least relatively you'll be all right eventually <laughs> and next question what's up with the stigma behind mental health disorders? my guy i know right even myself i feel like because honestly, I don't know why mental health is something that people. But I, I don't. I'm not going to come here and judge anybody because I know I was. I was there. You know the, how the society. I know, right? Like the society just sees it as. Anytime you hear something about mental health, I'm the mad. first thing that comes to their mind is like schizophrenia. You are mad. Whereas a lot of people are dealing with plenty of things: depression, anxiety, OCD, and and. Anorexia, PTSD, PTSD, oh my god. Honestly, a lot of people are dealing with a lot of things, but and all of this is part of mental health, but they don't just see it like that. When you just hear mental health, the first thing that comes to your mind is schizophrenia. And I don't know, it's how like the society puts it, I believe. Africa. Uh, <laughs> no, even okay, let me not say not just Africa when soon now it's the same thing. So that's how maybe some societies put it just to be on the safe side, but yeah, but your mental health is very important. It's beyond being on the streets. You know, they used to say that many are mad, few are roaming. So is that that statement is actually very real. So your mental health is very important also. Is it true people have more mental health issues these days, or we are just talking more about it? <sighs> That's a very serious question. Is it true that people have more mental health issues or we're just talking about it? I'm not, I would say it's a 50-50 thing, to be honest, because fine, we're getting more woke, we're getting more aware, so we're talking more about it, but it didn't mean that people before did not have it. A lot of, um, will I say, like we hear stories of mothers that are so sad that if you hear their stories, depression, but they couldn't talk about it. Maybe they didn't know, you know, we're more aware, as I said, so like... It's a 50-50 thing. I think, fine, it was there before, but we're also getting more aware. And I don't know if it's just happening now. I doubt it's just happening now. It has always been there. Life and we're getting more now. aware. Life is not a dying thing. But yeah, you get what I'm saying, Sha. Okay. My next question. Okay. I'm sorry if this comes off rude. It's not my intention, but isn't depression considered pride because you are the center of your thoughts and God opposes the pride? Does that consider it a sin? Again, I'm sorry if this is too much or unnecessary. <laughs> oh. I can read it again for you. <laughs> okay. To answer that question, I love the fact that you have already apologized. So, apology accepted, <laughs> apology taken. I don't know so much about this depression and pride thing. I know I've heard it on the internet before, but I don't think currently, though, maybe because I don't have so much knowledge about it. If I if I learn more about it, like if I, you know, get convinced, right. then maybe I could switch to the other side. But for now, I feel like it is so emotionally unintelligent and very, um, what's the word? Very. The word is not it's rude. No very, no, no, <laughs> very, somehow, very wrong, extremely wrong for that matter, to say that someone going through depression means they are proud. I don't understand the correlation because pride is something of self-centeredness. Depression to self-centeredness. No, you don't. You don't choose to be depressed. It's not depression. Is not something. It's not. It's not you, you didn't, it, how do I even put it? You don't want to be depressed. It's not something you don't want to be there. It's not what you want. And a lot of people with depression are fighting to come out of it. So you don't get to sit down and say, is, 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 they are being self centered. I, I don't agree with you though. I don't know. I could be convinced, but currently, no. It's not pride to me. It is a struggle. The same way people struggle with hypertension and diabetes and cancer, depression is a struggle that people that are there don't want to be there. That's why they are seeking help and that's why they are trying to make themselves happy. That's why they are trying to come out of it. So to me, it is not pride. Are you the center of your thoughts? 
What are the symptoms of depression for starters? <laughs> Should I go into that? No. <laughs> but yeah, like, are you the center of your thoughts? Sort of. But you, you don't want to be there, to be honest. You don't want to be depressed. So to me, it's not pride. It is not, it doesn't depict pride in any way. Pride is not shown as depression. Another thing is that pride is like over-inflated self-esteem. Like, yeah. over-inflated sense of self. Maybe not self-esteem, but over-inflated sense of self. Whereas depression, they feel so low. They feel so guilty. Like, there's no link to me. I, I can't see the the middle the middle ground. So I don't think so. And it will be wrong for you to tell that to a depressed person that you yes you are proud. Hmm. But that's where I'll stop for now. Thank you. Hope have you have been able to clear it. I don't personally I don't see any link between depression and pride. I don't think you are proud if you are depressed. And if you are depressed out there, please there is help for you. The thing with pride is that pride if you are depressed and you are proud. It might deprive, might make you not to seek treatment. Do you get like mm, because yeah. you don't want to be that kind of thing? But That's being depressed, mind. yeah, being depressed does not mean you are proud. No, I don't. I don't agree with you. Yeah, agree. coming from this angle of your the sense of maybe your the center of your thoughts, and I don't agree. Next question: <clears throat> Is it possible to avoid depression? If yes, then how? Okay, is it possible to avoid depression? Okay, the thing with depression is that it depends on what we're talking about here. Are we seeing it as a disorder or an emotion? Because some people see depression as an emotion. Like, I'm sad, I'm depressed, so some people see it as an emotion. So the question is, can I avoid it? Right? Yes. Can I avoid it? How? Yes. Okay, as a disorder, I, you, I don't think you can avoid it because you, you, you can't see it coming. Like, it's not something you will see and say, okay, I don't want you to come to me, so I will dodge you, that kind of thing. That's not your situation. So I don't think you can avoid it because it's the same basic life stressors that will still hit you. It's the same life issues that everyone is going through that you will have to go through. Mm. But, because <laughs> but because your threshold is not really as strong as another person, you will relapse, that kind of thing. So I don't think it can be avoided. But as an emotion, I don't know. Do you choose it? Do you? You don't choose. To things be sad. happen. Yeah, you don't choose to be sad. So things happen that make you there. Can you avoid it now? No. I don't know if you can be happy all the days of your life. Like <laughs> I feel like you know, emotions come. Like things come. You rise and fall. Rise, fall. Sometimes rise, stay up there. Then maybe when you're down, you talk yourself out of it. But can you avoid it from reaching you? I, I don't know. I don't think so. Actually, but yeah. And sorry, to add to that, I'd like to say that people should see depression as, as an emotion. The same way you feel happy is the same way you feel sad. Like, so being sad just means that see it from a point of, see sadness. I'm not talking of depressive disorder. I'm talking of depression as an emotion. That's sad, being sad, right? So see it as um, things, this life, it gets us life be. It gets us to be made. And honestly, life is there are a lot of things that just hit you, bass bulls, bass bulls. Bass bulls just left and right. It just hit you from different angles. <laughs> so there are a lot of things that hit you. And so there are times you'll be happy and there are times you will be sad. So just see sadness as I wanted let's say you want something and it didn't come to you and because you're passionate about it, you feel sad that you didn't get it. So you are sad that you didn't get it. So you now strive harder or you just have hope that you're alive. So you could still get what you want. So whatever that is leading you to the depression or to the depressed states, like mood, emotion, mm-hmm. just know that you can always come out of it because you're alive. And whatever you wanted, you could get it. I hope you guys shall get what I'm trying to see if you get it from it. Yeah, all right. How do I treat depression? How do you treat depression? Okay, as a disorder, you need medication and therapy. So, medication and therapy. So, I advise you to see a psychiatrist, a therapist. I advise you to see someone in that light, like a psychiatrist, a therapist, a mental health specialist. The same way cancer patients need an oncologist, is the same way depressive disorder patients need a doctor. So, don't, it's, not, it's not people are depressed and people come out of it. And I love the fact that our generation is actually getting woke. Like, mm-hmm. nowadays, people see therapists as a regular stuff. Like, I'm going to a therapist because 
boyfriend broke up with me because mom see died like all these things so people are seeing therapy as a normal thing so yeah i'll advise you to see a therapist and medications like ssris could be given by a psychiatrist so yeah just see a psychiatrist they could also be therapists because the ones i know are therapists so what has god revealed to you through scriptures about mental health problems okay what has god revealed to me through scriptures about mental health problems okay i know there are a lot of scriptures about mental health even if i might not remember them now or I've, maybe i've not come across them but the one that i remember is the one that i will tell you so third john chapter one verse two beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health and be in health ah but let me read it for you to hear beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers so you may prosper in all things and be in health being in health means your total health including your mental health let's start from there and then it answers just as your soul prospers so whenever it comes to all this you know most of the mental health disorders are stuff with the mind like some of them are stuff with the mind so my mind is the soul part of me like the soul you know we are body soul and spirit i'm a spirit i have a soul and i live in a body like that that's how we have our three tripartite or whatever they call it so the mind part of me is the soul version like the soul is my mind i mean my mind is part of my soul let me just put it there and the bible says i should prosper even as my soul prospers so that means my soul is meant to prosper and to prosper just as my soul prospers so that means my mind is meant to be on point and that's my mental health right there like if your mind is not the, the reason why mental health is even more very very important is because once your mental health is truncated once there is a problem it affects every other part of you whether you like it or not like you don't like it but that's what happens so that's why like your mental health is very important and the bible says you should prosper as your soul prospers prospers theology <laughs> you should prosper as your soul prospers so your soul is meant to prosper and you're meant to prosper in that direction and then the bible also says in romans 12 12 verse 2 and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god your mind by the renewal of your mind that means you have to be conscious of your mind you have to make sure your mind is is on point you have to make sure that your mind is is good you have to make sure your mental health is very stable that's the word you have to make sure your mental health is very stable you need to know yourself you need to understand yourself you need to understand how your body works you need to understand how your mind works and you need to you know just be conscious of your mental health because if you don't renew your mind if you are not conscious of your mind then you will not renew it and you will not prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god just like the bible says so i'm going to stop there for now if there was one thing you would like us to remember about mental health, what would that be? Oh wow. Okay. I've said a lot already though. There's one thing I want you to remember about your mental health. What would it be? Your mental health is very important. The same way your um, body breaks down, the same way people have hypertension, diabetes, cancer, the same way people have a lot of things going on in their body is the same way your brain and i don't know why your brain works 24 7 like it's working around the clock not like other organs don't work around the clock but your brain at least should be allowed to have a breakdown once or twice so mental health is very important and if you have a mental health disorder it's okay like it's a disorder that you have a lucky person like that's all i don't know so in nigeria you say maybe if you're chubby and people are laughing at you or they are making you feel the kind of way just say nah fat i fat i know keep person so it's mental health is a disorder that you have the same way people have hypertension is the same way you have your own so like it's not don't be ashamed of it own it accept it know your mind try to know yourself know your emotions emotional intelligence is very important mental health is very broad if you're telling me to tell you one thing, I'll just say be conscious of your mental health. Try your best. It's about you. It is about you. It's not about your parents. It's not about your siblings. It's not about your boyfriend. It's not about your husband, your spouse. It's about you. 
it's about you. So try to know yourself, know yourself so that when variations come, when things hit you, you'll be able to detect, oh, this is not what, this is not me and stuff. But your mental health is very important and pay great attention to it. Thank you. Okay, so we've come to the end of this video. Thank you very much, Oluchi, for gracing my show. I'm honored, though. I'm yes. very honored. Thank and you. Thank too. you very much for watching to the end. I hope I hope she answered your questions well, sir. You can still drop other questions if you actually do have in the comment section. Don't forget to like, to share, to inspire us so and bless us so. Don't forget to subscribe. And to meet again next week Friday. I love you, but go love you more. Peace.